स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया वेलकम टू दिस क्लास इन लास्ट फ्यू क्लासेस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट पार्टिकल इन ए बॉक्स प्रॉब्लम वी लुकड एट द सोल्यूशन ऑफ पार्टिकल इन ए वन डायमेंशनल बॉक्स प्रॉब्लम वी ऑल्सो लुकड एट द फ्री पार्टिकल प्रॉब्लम इन टू डेज क्लास विल गो बियॉन्ड वन डायमेंशनल बॉक्स एंड विल गो एक्चुअली टू हायर डायमेंशन इन दैट केस वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी पार्टिकल इन ए थ्री डायमेंशनल बॉक्स so when we say particle in a uh, three dimensional box uh we uh, can imagine a cuboid let us define the three axes uh let's call this x y c and the sides are a along uh, x axis b along y axis and uh, c along z axis let us consider this uh, cuboid uh, a box with the dimension a b c where the particle is like we had uh like we had the uh, the uh, particle in a one dimensional box we defined that the particle experiences zero potential energy within the box one dimensional box and infinite potential energy outside the box we also would use the same uh, definition over here so here we would see say that the particle the potential energy is zero for x between 0 and a y between 0 and b and z between 0 and c so this is the origin 0 0 0 so this is the potential energy within the box and outside the box the potential energy is zero so like in the elsewhere what about the kinetic energy operator the kinetic energy operator we have already seen a square by 2m uh if you uh, if you see the kinetic energy operator is now expressed in terms of uh, the second derivative with respect to x y and z now the the hamiltonian is of course uh, sum of kinetic energy and potential energy operator and when we solve this problem we would write down the final schrodinger equation hi equals e psi if you remember the solution of particle in a one dimensional box you would remember that the wave function psi was a function of x alone because the particle was restricted to move only along x axis or along x direction but here since the particle can go around all three uh, dimensions in in this cuboid so therefore the wave function psi will have a functional depend dependence on x y and z in this case uh, this this will be the final wave function that we are uh, looking for we are going to express this final uh, wave function in terms of three functions f of x g of y h of z what we have done here is that we have used the so called uh, separation of variable technique we see that our potential energy operator is zero throughout the kinetic energy operator has terms which have only x dependence only y dependence and only z dependence there are no terms in our oper uh, hamiltonian operator which have xy or yz or xz uh, dependent so since there are no cross terms we can 
assume that this way of writing the wave function that the wave function can be expressed in terms of three function one which will consider the x, x, x direction alone the other which will take care of the y dimension the third one will take care of the z direction. So, this separation of variable this approximation we are assuming and then we would show that by making this assumption we do not run into any trouble we perfectly satisfy all the boundary condition of this problem that are uh, that are required to be satisfied. When I look at this wave, uh, uh, wave function that we have I have defined as f of x g of y and h of z I say that this wave function will eventually be acted upon by this kinetic energy or potential energy operator. So, the kinetic energy operator has some second derivative term let us first see what happens when I use this second partial derivative uh, on this function psi. So, when since the partial derivative is with respect to uh, the x coordinate alone. So, therefore, the g of y and h of z will remain un unchanged and the operator will act only on the f function. So, therefore, I can write or in shorthand I can write this expression as f double prime which represent the second derivative with respect to f g and h. Similarly, I can write down the second derivative with respect to y as f which is a function of x, second derivative of g which is a function of y and h which is a function of z because when I am taking second derivative of y with respect to y the x and z function will remain un unchanged. Similarly, when I write d square by d z square on, uh, and apply on uh, apply on uh, psi I get f g h double prime. Okay. So, we will use this, uh, these uh, forms that we have uh, discussed so far into our Hamiltonian. So, this is the starting point we have h psi equals e psi. So, therefore, minus a square by 2 m d square These are the partial derivative with respect to psi, which is f g h equals e f g h. So, this is my wave function. So, I am dropping the dip functional dependence of f g and uh, h. Please remember f has only x dependence, g has only y dependence, and h has only z dependence. When I you, uh, do the second derivative on this function, the results I have already uh, written down so that uh, we can continue our discussion further. In the right hand side. So, this the first term is coming when I am differentiating uh, with respect to x. So, the second term is coming when I am differentiating with respect to y, the third term is coming when I am differentiating the function uh, with respect to uh, z. And in both right hand side and left hand side I can divi uh, divide f g h. In that case I will be left with And this E is the is the energy in the Schrodinger equation and this is uh, of course going to be a constant. I can rewrite this equation in the following way. I am going to take the g and h functions to the right hand side. If you look at this equation, the left hand side depends only on x variable. The right hand side, of course, this is a constant, 
has f has some functions which depend on y, some functions which depend depend on z. So in the left hand side I have got functions which depend on x, the right hand side I have got functions which do not depend on x but depend on y and z. So when I have such a situation when the left hand side depends on some variable and the right hand dip side depends on other variables in that case I can see the left hand side and also the right hand side are actually independent of any of this variable. So therefore the left hand side I can say this is a constant. So and I define this constant as E of x. So uh, we would the, the left we will continue our discussion with the left hand side, but before that I can also do the same exercise by keeping the g function on the left hand side which will, which will be a function of y and f and h on the right hand side which will be the function of x and z and argue that since right left hand side depends only on y whereas the right hand side does not depend on y but since left hand side and right hand side are equal so therefore the left hand side function must be a constant and therefore this term h square by 2 m z double prime by g would also be a constant. I would perhaps call that E y and similarly I would call uh, minus h square by 2 m h double prime by h as, as uh, another constant I would call that by E z. So uh, uh, let us come back. So this is uh, what we have. is a constant all right so now let us look in, uh, at these uh, terms individually. So I will just do for the uh, first term and the rest, uh, the second and third will, will simply follow the same uh, procedure. So when I uh, rewrite this equation, If you look carefully, we have already seen a term, uh, a, an, equ an equation like this minus a square by 2 m d square by d x square and a function second derivative of a function and in the right hand side we have e x of m. So you, you would identify immediately that this is a Schrodinger equation with respect to x axis with respect to x dimension for a function f and we know it, its solution. We can also uh, write down the homogeneous uh, second order differential equation. And its solution is uh, also something that uh, that we already know. Uh, if you remember, so this, this uh, three dimensional box problem uh, has become three independent one dimensional problems and we are currently dealing with one of these three one, dimension, uh, one dimensional problems. So in this case the wave function can be written down as, as, as a uh, linear combination of two exponential functions and once we have this linear uh, combination of two, one, uh, two exponential functions then we can uh, uh, put boundary conditions and here like the particle in a one dimensional function we have to have the same boundary condition that at the interface in the x, the x along the x axis the wave function must be continuous. So when I am talking about x axis I should say that the wave function should be uh, continuous at x equals 0 and at x equals a because that is the length of the box uh, along, uh, along x axis. So when I impose this condition we would actually get back the solution that we already are familiar with as, as a particle in one dimensional box. In that case what I would get is that the function f which will be, uh, will be a function of uh, x will be 2 by a under square root sin n 1 
phi x by a. Please compare this function uh, with, with, uh, with respect to the one dimensional uh, particle in a one dimensional box uh, problem. So, we had in that case uh, in this place instead of a that was capital L which was the length of the box the same here. And here we have this n 1 the quantum uh, quantum number n 1 which can be like the previous case go from 1, 2, 3 and, and so on. So, therefore, this function f has a dependence on one quantum number n 1 and similarly I can write the function g which will be a function of uh, y as, as n 2 and in this case I have and the function h which will depend on z as 2 square root 2 over c sin n 3 pi z divided by c, where a, b and c are the dime size of the cuboid along x axis, y axis and z axis. And in this case n 2 is also goes 1, 2, 3 and so on, n 3 can also become 1, 2, 3. What about the energy? We see that the energy corresponding to the Schrodinger equation for, for f function is E of x. So, E of uh, E x will have a dependent will, will be written down as this one. E y and E z where n 1, n 2 and n 3 are the quantum numbers we have here. The sum of the 3 E x plus E y plus E z would be the total energy of the system which is given as mc square. This is the total energy. Now, this energy total energy depends on three quantum numbers n 1, n 2 and n 3. To make some more uh, interesting outcomes of this problem, we will make one uh, assumption is that instead of dealing with a cuboid, we will make this problem as is a cube. So, when you have a cube, your the only difference is that a, b and c become equal. So, therefore, the energy for a particle in a three dimensional box with size uh, with all sides equal is simply would become and the wave function the final wave function psi would be the product of f g and x f g and h which will simply be this this wave function is you you uh, uh, please notice that the energy function has h square by 8 m a square. So, a is the side of the, uh, the cube and we have three different quantum numbers n 1, n 2, n 3 and the wave function also has dependence on n 1, n 2, n 3 quantum number where these three functions are product of the, uh, the, the final wave function is product of three wave functions where whereas the final energy is the sum of three energies. So, this is a typical outcome when one uses this separation of variable where the final wave function when you impose separation of variable the final wave function becomes the product of 
wave functions uh, in the individual dimensions and the eigen, final eigenvalue becomes the sum of the eigenvalues in, in the individual dimensions. This is a general rule that you would actually encounter uh, also in future. We will use this expression uh, and uh, learn something about the energy levels of particle in a three dimensional box next. So, if you uh, just to uh, keep uh, refresh your memory. So, our total energy E had uh, where n 1, n 2, n 3 are 3 independent variables each n 1 and each of n 1, n 2 and n 3 would go from 1, 2, 3 and, and, uh, and so on. So, on. So, the lowest possible values of n 1, n 2 and n 3 are all 1. So, let us say this is n 1, this is n 2 and this is n 3 and this is my total energy A. If n 1 is 1, n 2 is 1, n 3 is 1, what would be the energy? The energy would be 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. So, therefore, 3 h square by 8 m a square. This is the lowest possible energy in a particle in a three dimensional box. If you remember the, the lowest possible energy in the particle in one dimensional box was s square by 8 m l square there was no 3 in it. So, this energy is the 0 point energy for Now, what are the next possible values of n, n 1, n 2, n 3? They can become 2, but then before we make all of them 2, we can see that I can make I can write like this 1, 1, 2. What would be the energy of this uh, state? That would be 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. So, 4 plus 2 is 6. So, therefore, I will be 6 h square by 8 m a square. I can also do as 1 to 1 and you see the energy of this state is also same as 6 h square divided by 8 m a square. There is one more function 2 1 1 which also have the same energy. So, now what we see is that we will have 3 different state functions with 3 different I, uh, 3 different state functions represented by 3 distinct Eigen functions which will have same Eigen values. This is a, a case of degeneracy. So, we see that this energy level is threefold degenerate. If we plot uh, energy axis, this will be the energy of 1, 1, 1. So, here n 1 is 1, n 2 is 1, n 3 is 1. This energy levels energy is, is 3 h square by 8 m a square and this is one fold degenerate. That means, there exists one eigenfunction which has this eigenvalue. The next set of eigenfunctions 1 1 2, 1 2 1 or 2 1 1 all three of them have same eigen same energy. So, I write it like this. So, this represents 1 1 2 this represents 1 2 1 and this represents 2 1 1. We can write th 3 different state functions or 3 different Eigen functions for each of these 3 levels whereas, their energies are all same that is 6 h square by 8, 8 m a square. So, these levels form these energy levels fall, fo, uh, form a 3 fold degenerate uh, system uh, three, 3 fold degenerate energy level. So, in this uh, this degeneracy the degree of degeneracy uh, this is so for the lowest eigenvalue the degree of degeneracy is 1 for the next eigenvalues the degree of degeneracy is 3 because there exist 3 linearly independent eigenfunctions that have same energy. Uh, we can continue uh, our, our, our discussion uh, further by making two labels 
uh, n, n 2 and n 3 as 2 whereas, n 1 is 1 or similarly, we can do it 2 1 2 or 2 2 1. You would see these three labels also would have would represent a three fold degeneracy. Uh, so, again I, uh, why they are three fold degenerate because there exist three different eigenfunctions that would have same uh, eigenvalues. Uh, the next uh, eigenvalue would be 2, 2, 2 and you can always find out this will be uh, 2 square plus 2 square plus 2 square. So, 12 into uh, 8 square by 8, 8, 8 m a square and this will be again one fold or non degenerate uh, solution. This degeneracy that we encountered in this, this problem uh, is because of the symmetry of the problem. If you see that if I if I write this eigenfunction corresponding to 1 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 1 they would all be more or less similar except for the fact where x y and z are there. So, if I make an inter interchange between x axis y axis and z axis you would see I can reproduce the, the same wave functions. So, therefore, the three pole degeneracy that I am seeing that is because when I if I rotate my Cartesian axis uh, from x to y, y to z and z to x in that case I actually reproduce the same uh, another, another uh, uh, wave function. So, the symmetry that we have in our problem is the root cause of observing this degeneracy. If, if we had a, a particle in a cuboid where a is not equal to b is not equal to c in though that cases this there is no such symmetry. So, therefore, we would not see this uh, degeneracy, but mind you in several higher dimensional cases you may also see degeneracies even when there exists no symmetry and in those cases we call them accidental degeneracy. These degeneracies are not driven by the symmetry of the system, but they are there because of the accidentally the numerical values of the eigen uh, numerical values of the eigen values become become equal and therefore, the, they are degenerate. Uh, that is all for today's class. Uh, thank you very much.